off when we take a break. Thank you, sir. Wait on Tom Ryder. He hasn't arrived yet. Okay, that's cool. And now. I might have to stop bringing my key this way. <laughs> I got spoiled being at home. They, they were right. There was always a pair right there. Yeah, like a lot of this came in yesterday and today. logging in now he said super oh i think he just logged in can you hear me can you hear us good evening hello, hello? Hey. yep can you hear me now i want to make sure that uh i'm using another computer so i just want to make sure it works it works the camera is up a little higher they get in the uh, panoramic. <laughs> yeah, we don't need to see your feet. <laughs> yeah. Uh -uh. <laughs> see my mess. Great. How are we doing tonight? Doing well. How are you doing? Good. Excellent. I'm good. Well, the fiscal year is coming to an end very quickly. Everyone's scrambling. And you can go on vacation for a month, right? Uh, All right, so the time yeah, yeah, it's going to be a while. September, uh, September maybe, uh, go to L.A. And then I'll go to Myrtle Beach in October. Nice. So, a little golfing yeah. down there? Myrtle Beach golf, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. All right, so we'll, we'll officially open the meeting. Okay, first item on the agenda will be a uh, local upgrade review for 111 Southwick Street with Tom Ryder. Tom, you're up. Hi, okay. I had it listed as 11. Is it 111? No, 11. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is a repair, and they are just seeking to have the alternate to percolation test, which is a, um, which is a local upgrade. It's pretty standard. Uh, they do a sieve analysis uh, witnessed by Steve Donatelli. Um, and the soil has come out as uh, um, silt loam, which is uh, not a great um, percolation uh, material. So they kind of have they have to use the, the most restrictive um, you know, sizing requirements. So it's a large system. They're going to use Elgin, uh, an Elgin system. It requires a, a deed notice. Uh, the applicant has already uh, given us the deed notice, so I'm not sure, Jack, if you gave them the heads up to do so, but they've already provided it. Um, and uh, everything else is designed in accordance with the requirements, so that's the only um, uh, local upgrade they're seeking. Um, so um, I I consider this a, a uh, you know, okay to proceed. Um, the only thing, uh, they just need to sign the application. They did sign the deed notice, but they didn't sign, the applicant did not sign the application. So it's just a formality if they just come in and sign it, and look at, you know, before we do the job card. All right. 
Tom Bickner. Present. You good with this? Um, I was just taking a look at the applications. Yeah, that's what I was doing. Uh, because you would be the man to make the motion. I will make the motion as presented by our engineer Tom Rader to uh, accept the uh, local upgrade approval based on uh, Tom's memorandum outline. All right, and I'll step down and second the motion for 11 Southwick Street. So we just have to make sure they sign the app. Mm -hmm. All good. So approved. Thank you, Tom. Okay. We can move on to the next item, which is our uh, well regulations. So you're up again. Okay. Um, I sent over fairly late uh, some uh, some updates to the. Uh, Discussions that we've been having uh, regarding the well rigs. Um, last time, last time we met, uh, we had a well driller uh, that attended the meeting and uh, spoke about um, basically the standards that they go through um, in order to drill the well and do the testing and uh, supplement supplemental. Um, water quality analysis and treatment. Um, so, and I think we had some other discussions um, in regards to um, you know, testing requirements and um, notices that may need to be put on place. So, so the update I have, um, it's still not quite ready for for prime time, but I think uh, I think we're probably near the end of our review. Um, so, should I just go over the couple of items that I added? Please, so and uh, if you could give me the section number. Okay. <clears throat> All right, starting at uh, five point three. Very good, thank you. Um, I noticed uh, 5.310. Um, we had a provision in this in that section to have the construction of injection wells for liquid waste disposal shall be prohibited. Um, problem is, is that some of these uh, treatment systems require a back flush and they should not be connecting to a septic system um, because that will, that will likely fail the septic system. So um, if we make some changes to this section to say shall not be connected to the septic system and um, there are um, injection uh, injection wells that that are allowed uh, with Board of Health uh, permission and it's based upon domestic and um, there are requirements. So um, in a lot of the times the requirement is uh, just a notice to the Board of Health and a location where they are. So if we formulate this, and I think I'm gonna have to find the wording for this, formulate it to, you know, to have an offset to the actual well, and septic system, make sure that these uh, injection uh, wells are not um, discharging to a nearby uh, wetland or or wellhead or or septic system. Uh, they are allowed under under DEP's guidance. Um, there's a uh, there's a uh, pretty much self certifying permit that's that's allowable. 
Um, so I don't know why this was originally added into the regulation. Um, I think we need to look at that just to make sure that people are not connecting. You know, if they have a, um, um, if they have a uh, water softener, for example, um, that water softener waste should not be going into the septic system. It's got to it's got to go someplace else. So they need to find a location. Um, so that's five ten. Sorry, five point three point ten. I think the um, Misco Hill School, when they had to try to get the, I believe it was magnesium out of their well, they actually put in a separate leach field, essentially. Exactly, and and that's allowable with um there are like i think there are five categories of well uh injection wells um and um uh, in one of the um and i can't remember which which uh, which one of the five is but one of them is is just is a self certifying other ones require uh some sort of treatment you know depends on what you're getting into um you know definitely industrial type of injection wells are Definitely uh, not not permitted uh, without uh, DEP uh, reviewing and, and probably some sort of uh, treatment advice. Uh, these are um, yeah for, you know, for for these type of systems, they're um, they are permittable. I just I just need to narrow the band down a little bit and just make sure that it's recorded. But okay, want to so discourage people from discharging into their septic. OK, so that, that that still needs a little bit of work, that item. Yeah. OK, yeah. I'll come up with a, I'll come up with a wording on that. All right, thank you. That actual uh, sentence. Should that actually read the construction of injection wells for liquid waste disposal shall be prohibited and shall not be connected to the septic system? Yeah, I, I I just kind of highlight. I started to type something in there. I just say I just highlighted. It says like this needs to be fixed. <laughs> Got it. Okay. So, so kind of highlighted in red, just to let you know. Yeah, just wanted to understand the actual uh, what it's, the statement um, was saying. That's all. It shall not be connected to the septic system, and it shall it should be required to have a uh, if there is a. Uh, you know, if you discharge to the uh, underground, it needs to be located in the, and shall meet the same setbacks as a septic system to to a well. So it should be 100 feet away from a well, um, and so on and so forth. So we'll we'll put the we'll uh, I'll take a look at the DEP's guidance and I'll just plug that information in. Very good, thank you. All right. Um. 5.4 uh, disinfection. Um, so procedures should be uh, dechlorination. Um, so I wanted to add that in. Uh, so if they're uh, so they. So, so they're going to disinfect the well. They're going to um, add enough uh, chlorine to have 50 parts per million residual, and then they uh, they wait 24 hours. Then they pump it out, but they should de be dechlorinating that water. They should test first to see what their um, what the residuals left. It should be um, if they if they uh, if they bring it up to 50, there should be probably 20 parts per million left of chlorine residual. And then as they're wasting it, they should dechlorinate. I mean, they should be pumping to wetlands or near their um, you know, areas that are going to get burnt out. So um, I'm going to add uh, dechlorination. And I think that's what the well driller was mentioning too. Uh, 
5.5. Uh, number two, second water sample prior to certificate of completion, uh, well certificate. Um, shall be collected from the main tap and the house shown that the and, and shows that the water quality meets the town of Menden's drinking water standards. I think we say this in another part as well. Yeah, no, that all makes sense. Especially um, if they're installing some kind of treatment device. Yeah, so the first procedure is they first they test at the uh, at the at the wellhead, and then and then they do a second test at the uh, like the kitchen sink. Um, I had for a well analysis. Um, I kind of just put this as like a place saver. Um, and oh, by the way, I um, got um, notice uh, that on Hastings Street there is going to be. Um, I think one of the uh, engineers is going to uh, be putting together a treatment system for one of the uh, transient non-community water supplies, or PFAS. Um, so they wanted to know what our thoughts were on it, you know, whether we need a permit. It's not in our jurisdiction. It's one of these uh, public water supplies. DEP has, um, is permitting them on this and it's going to be uh, uh, going through the, uh, uh, this is a, uh, they're going to, they're going to use some sort of ion exchange. Uh, system in order to treat for PFAS over there. Um, but I'm thinking that as part of our, um, as we're doing some more research on PFAS in town, we should like, uh, I'm not sure, do we have a GIS manager in town at all, by any chance? Not to my knowledge, I don't okay. believe so. And really, the only the only discussions that we've had on PFAS, it, it seems as though uh, whenever they had talked about, we're, we're still kind of waiting for the DEP to, you know, give us some guidance. Um, yeah. Still waiting. So it, yeah, it seems to be something that's evolving. Yeah. Yes, and um, so yeah, the other feds are coming down with some more guidance too for the states in. Um, my thought is that once once we start learning these areas, these uh, public water supplies that are needing to treat, that we kind of um, locate them um, on a, on a map and just indicate, you know, here's some concentrations of PFAS, um, inform the neighborhoods as they're looking at. Um, you know, drilling wells. Um, and this is not considered a uh, like a like a uh, an MCL um, uh, at the moment. I don't think um, so. It's not like a uh, like a spill. Like they have to do a release abatement measures and stuff like that. This is more of a just a kind of guidance for us to say, hey, these are areas that sometimes there's rhyme or sometimes there's no rhyme or reason for the PFAS. Sometimes it's like, oh, it makes sense. It's in an industrial area and other times it's in the middle of the woods. How does the PFAS getting here? Uh, but at least it might give some guidance on, hey, you might want to take a look for more sampling um, in this re in this area of town. OK, uh, so that's something maybe we can plug in, maybe get some mapping. Uh, mapping done, but um, uh, having it on GIS uh, or 
or at least, um, I mean, using it old school, maybe we have to do it old school. We gotta get a map of the town and start like putting uh, pins uh, in locations of town. Yeah, uh, years ago, Missy started that project around the lake and she was doing it old school. And yep. uh, it worked, worked out fine. Um, yep. So if we, if we have to start that way, uh, that shouldn't be a problem. I do know that somewhere along the line there was some discussion at I, I don't know if it was purchasing the software to use GIS. Um, I think they were going to do it town wide. They may have already done it and we would just need access to it. Yeah, there is some uh, web GIS available, um, but I'm not sure who manages it. And, you know who who's doing the layers. Um, whether there's a layer that the uh, town officials can add in, that is not necessarily online. Um, you know, versus um, you know having it. Oh, um, you know, a lot of it's just assessor's information. So sometimes it comes from the assessor. You know, so you can. Uh, click on a, a lot and you can see who owns the property and where's the book indeed. Um, uh, but some yeah, of them it, are pretty complex. So. Right. It, it's been a while. I don't remember if someone actually came in and made a presentation, um, but I, I know there was, you know, talk of uh, utilizing that software at one point, uh, but it, that was quite a few years back already. But um, no, that's a great idea, Tom. Thank you. All right. Yeah. So for now, we can uh, I can print up some uh, I can print up some mapping of the town if uh, see uh, see how see how that works um, for the office. Okay. Um, going down here, um, the five six. Um, Added in that section about the uh, sample and minimum two water samples shall be submitted. That was already there previously. Um, I'm just going to put that in the heading for the water quality 5.6. Okay. Um, and scrolling down further. Um, There's a section in, um, I just added for number seven, just added uh, Massachusetts Certified Well Driller is the only one that really can pull these type of permits to abandon wells. Um, don't want to make the mistake that the homeowner can just pour concrete into a well and call it abandoned. It's got to be done by a licensed well driller. That's that's per, per uh, the DCRS code. Might be, might even be in, in the law as well. Um, but I've seen uh, people try to save a buck, and they just end up <laughs> causing more problems. So, yeah, I um, think we, I think we had a similar discussion and uh, about a property on Main Street, and um, I, I believe we had this discussion about a licensed installer having to. Uh, decertify the well. Right, yeah, 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 right. I, I do recall that, right. Uh, that did, was didn't that one end up in the, yeah, didn't that end up in the middle of a, a new system, a new septic system? Yes, yeah. Okay, so. They, they didn't want to abandon it, and it was like right next to their septic system, or, right, or even right. in the septic system. Yeah, I thought it ended up in the field. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Okay. Um, Five point seven well completion requirements. Um, the well driller uh, last the last meeting indicated that um, they actually do the install of the treatment system, and they select which treatment is required is needed, um, which is fine. Um, you know, as you know, as long as um, you know they they conduct that second test at the at the tap, 
but I'm also thinking that um, they need to uh, add a deed notice that um, you know if it doesn't meet the MCL or the or the secondary requirements that hey we're using activated carbon as a treatment system on, for the well because it it did not meet um, you know for example uh, some sort of volatile or 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 something else. So that's on section three and four. And yep. can you hear me? Yes. All right. Uh, so I just added that to 5.73 uh, and four. And then I also added it to the private well certificate, which is in section 5.10. Um, so the following shall be submitted to the Board of Health to the board to obtain a private well certificate, the well construction permit, the construction permit, copy of the well completion report, copy of the certificate of construction, water quality quantity, copy of the uh, water quality and analytical, and the D notice if required to, to meet uh, MCL SMCL standards. Um, I actually don't see as built on this. So, uh, do you see as built on this? So, probably you have an as built location. So an as-built location for the uh, well, where the back flush is, where the well is, or or where the yeah or or where the well is, or and or and the back flush. Okay, so you, you, that way there you're making sure that there's that hundred foot separation. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can find it in the future. So where would that go, Tom? Where would we put that? Um, five or ten. Uh, item six. Okay. Okay. All right. I think we're at the yeah the location where we finished last time. Yeah, we stopped at number six point zero. Okay. All right. So well destruction. Um, I don't know if you guys have any uh, comments on this section. Um, I don't think there's really any changes that I see. I just want to make sure that we use the similar terms, destruction, abandonment, um, in the definition. So I'll just double check with the uh, definition so we're talking about the same thing you guys see anything yeah I, I can't think of too many wells that have been uh destructive or 
happened uh, in my time. So I, I can't think of any situations really where we've run into uh, too many problems in that on that issue. The only one that I can remember was on Nine Main Street. Yeah, and that's the one that I was talking about that ended up in the middle of a yeah, new that, beach field. That one they did do a permit to deconstruct. Right. That's the only one I've seen. Okay. Yeah, I keep. Uh, so, so uh, section seven uh, variances, we'll make grand variance of the application, um, manifestly unjust, and applicants prove the same degree of public health and environmental protection required under the regulations. It's pretty much standard um, variance. Uh, written uh, shall be in writing. Um, now, the only thing I ask is like in Title V, if you require the variance, you usually have to um, notify the abutters. Uh, is that something that we want to add? I'm trying to think. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking maybe on some of the um, the tighter properties, just like we've come in, you know, situations with new or, or repairs to septic systems. It probably would be uh, a good thing to notify the abutters um, if someone's doing something in the village or doing something around the lake. Those properties get real tight. Okay, yeah, especially if um, the variance is for like location of the property line offset and potentially it's going to prohibit uh, the next door neighbor from putting their septic system in because the well is too close to the property line now, <laughs> you know. Right. Uh, so, or even, so, you know, like, like you mentioned, this, this backwash well. Right. You know, if if we grant a variance because it's a real tight property, and we're not at a hundred feet anymore, um, depending upon what the treatment system is, I I think it would be you know good information for the neighbors. Okay. finally got me <laughs> okay all right any any other uh thoughts on section seven tom no. anything no i i would agree with the um notification to require abutters i mean to notify abutters yeah <clears> i mean should be a requirement yeah i mean especially you know with with again the village and the lake, oh, yeah. um, we certainly want to be good neighbors. You know, we we were always running into issues over there yep. as far as um, distance to a well or a neighbor's well or a septic system or a property line. So we should probably treat everything the same. Mm -hmm. I mean, when it comes to the lake, I mean that's actually a more of a concern for the town as it uh, in general because of the resource. That it is well, absolutely. Um, which begs the question: Should something like that actually require a public hearing versus just a notification of a button? Should there be a consideration for a public hearing on it? I don't know, Tom Ryder. What are your thoughts on that? Um, yeah, yeah, maybe the term hearing is more more appropriate. Just um, just so that. Uh, they're able to speak um, any objection. Um, and so usually when you talk about a variance, um, it, it gives, I, I need a variance because I need need the, the well over here. It's going to be like um, you're varying the code for a reason. Please present, you know, why it's manifestly unjust 
and um, and you meet in the same uh, public health. And then you know the neighbor could disagree. Um, it doesn't mean that we have. I mean, it doesn't mean that that the the neighbor is part of the uh, approval process. Other than they'll say, well, you're you're creating a, an issue with my well now or something or my septic system. Or there, so so maybe uh, maybe maybe we'll write it in the same terms that like uh, Title Five is. Uh, yeah, we should uh, probably treat it treat it the same. Yeah, that way they, that way they, we don't have to think about it. it, it the The rules are you know the same across the boards. Right. And Title Five um, says um, the person requests a variance has established an enforcement of provisions from which the variance is sought is manifestly unjust, and there's there's facts involved uh, and presented. Um, Establishing a level of protection that is at least equivalent. Um, as far as the process, um, it, it just says a Board of Health meeting, it doesn't say hearing. The variance. Um, what type of method are we using to notify the abutters? It's um, right right now uh, in Title Five. It's certified mail, but um, so but, we, know, could just, we could just treat it the same. Yeah, we treat it the same, or you can go. With the, I think uh, Conservation Commission allows um, a, uh, a uh, just sometimes people don't pick up the green cards. Have have a um, you have some sort of uh, affidavit with um, cer certificate of mailing that the post office stamps. So the mail went out. Um, there was no green cards involved and. And the person who who um, who mailed it certifies that they mailed this letter, the letter that they present. Okay, and then we could just do it at a meeting. Yeah. Because all the abutters have been notified. Yeah. <clears throat> because they still get the opportunity to speak. They do. Um, I just I view the lake <clears throat> as a town wide resource. So from my view, when it comes to the lake, opening it to the town uh, would be my preference. All right. So <clears throat> for input, do, do you want to treat the lake <clears throat> differently? Given given the tack that we're trying to take mm -hmm. for the lake moving forward, we're trying to uh, we have this. Uh, you know, new task force that's been created, and the idea is to kind of pay better attention to the lake and try to address issues and keep it a resource for many years to come. Why don't we um, ask them how they'd like it done? That may not be a bad Give idea. Give them the opportunity. Their view. Right? Yeah. It, it, especially if we're going to treat it differently. Again, that's just my view, but on, on that particular. Yeah area yeah no i i it, i mean it, we can we could not you know bring it up a level mm -hmm. if that's what they want to do we would just have to make sure that we define that area mm -hmm. yeah i i don't have a problem with that mm -hmm. and then we could still notify the abutters oh yeah but that would allow everybody else to be in the loop right that yes. it, you know involves a lake because for those that, are, those that are listening that may not be aware, we now have this new 
Lake Dipmuk Task Force Association has been created. And this task force will have representation from different groups. We're going to have a representative from the Board of Health. We'll have a representative from the Select Board. We'll have a representative from Conservation, representative from the Highway Department, and a representative from the Lake Dipmuk Association. So it kind of factors in all those areas. And it's given that, I would think um, all those groups, you know, having their input and their, having their awareness and being made aware, I think it's a good way to go. But. All right, so we can send a communication to that task force on this issue and ask them if they would like it to be heard at a regular Board of Health meeting or if we want, they want us to notch it up and make it a public hearing. Public hearing. Yeah. And if we're going to do that, we just have to make sure again that we define the geographic area right. around the lake. Yeah. And, you know, just like some things are a butter, something are a butters, and the yeah. butters a butter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we just have to make sure that we define that yeah. and. Tom Ryder, do you see any problem with treating the lake area a, a little different? No, especially if uh, it's an identified location that is of, con of concern. So, um, you know, that's, I think that's uh, I think it's within your view to say, hey, we, we need to consider public health. Um, there is a more. Um, a problematic uh, potential problematic issue over the, these lake areas, you know, swimming and uh, other water quality issues that may be an issue. Good. Thank you for bringing that up. Sure. Yeah. Sometimes you can't treat everything the same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All right, Tom Ryder, proceed. I think we we hit the variance section there. Yeah, so so penalties. Um, um, so you're based on general laws. I'm not sure if there's any uh, Minden bylaw uh, ticketing. Um, uh, uh, non criminal uh, ticketing uh, that is. Uh, uh, that, that you guys are training, you guys go through it all by any chance or or anything that comes up every once in a while at the uh, town meeting. Uh, but this is under, uh, I, I think this uh, penalty is under chapter 111, uh, which pretty much gives the board health the, the ability under nuisances to do, uh, I think, minimum of $10. I am not sure of the maximum it really is five hundred dollars per day. Well, uh, th this section was existing in our regulations. Yeah. So it, it it must if it was existing from when they were written in ninety seven. I would say that it 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 could be outdated but it must have been in compliance at that time i don't know okay. tom tom fickney you're uh, an expert with the uh the nuisance section of the mgl well have you, you remember reading anything like that i can't say uh, that i um, go ahead all tom. The oh the bylaw yeah oh the men bylaws is it in the men bylaws by any chance no we have uh non-criminal disposition yeah. Uh, that, no. All right. Well, we can we can research that. Alan would have that information. All right. So we will section eight penalties. We'll uh we'll research with the town bylaws. Yeah, I'll just double check uh, chapter one eleven. I I think I know. I think the minimum minimum is ten dollars. Um, it's not. It's not the way of the Board of Health to start penalizing people monetary values. It's usually we ask nicely, nice and warm and fuzzy. We ask again, we start to get, okay, you need to comply now. And then then you start with it. But so it, was, it deals with a few more warnings first. So you're not you're hitting someone who is really willful, not somebody who accidentally did something wrong. Right. So 
So the idea is not to real, you know, so people get um, concerned about the penalties that someone's going to go crazy. No, that's not the case. The case is that you point to something, you have enforcement capability to go further if you have to. Yeah, we'll just check and make sure that that's fairly current. Yeah. Yeah, the goal has always been, from our perspective, to educate, to help people comply, not to put a hammer down, but you hope you never have to, but right. you might need to have that hammer. Right? Yeah, I mean, obviously, in 97, this was the route that the board decided to go. Yeah. So I'm going to assume at that time, it, it fell within the bylaws, but so we should probably, uh, hopefully we're never going to need it, but we should just probably check and make sure that it, it, it might need some updating mm -hmm. if it's not following the bylaws right now. Um, but other, yeah. if we find it's following the bylaws, we can just keep it as is. Mm -hmm. In my experience too, is the, um, the judge magistrate is really, is really receptive to board of health, public health threat issues. Whereas, um, whereas if it's a uh, another department that is, uh, say for example, uh, banning uh, uh, water in your yard, um, even though you ask nicely and give them warnings, and then, then you start to penalize them, um, usually in that case the judges are more likely to say, um, yeah, no, we're not going to let this fine stand, you're going to ask them again and again to that this is a warning, whereas the public, uh, whereas the Board of Health, all right, you have the, there's a public health threat, the judges are more likely to say, okay, let's, we can penalize them if you want, you want to, want to set a number of days, and uh, that's been my experience. <laughs> so, but again, that's more of just, uh, you know, the last resort. Um, so it comes into disclaimer. Uh, not a guarantee. Uh, which I don't have any objection to in this section, section nine. And severability, which is uh, important to have. Um, it's a standard language. Um, I have Joy Skillmore as a member, Alan as the chair, and Tom as the vice chair. Are you, Correct. Are you guys going to um, to organize, or is it just going to ma maintain that way? Well, at least for another year, it's going to maintain that way. Yeah, we we did formally go through the reorg, and this is the uh, this is the order. That was determined okay. for this year that we're in. It's something that we do every year. All right. After an election. Should I set the date for the end of the summer? So we can do one last cleanup. Yeah. Because it looks like we just have a few things to to verify or add. So that would be uh, that would be fine. And we'd want you know Joyce to have an opportunity. Oh, absolutely. To, you know. Take this all in and get our feedback. Yeah. yeah, we get July, August. We'll definitely have it ready. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Took a very while. <laughs> all right. Thank, thank you, you very Tom. much for all your efforts here, Tom. Very good. All right. Let me know if you need anything, and uh, I'll talk to you soon, Jack. Right. Yes, you will. Okay. Night. Thanks, John. Okay. Night. Night. Thank you. All right. I do want to mention that Jason Kuda, the select board member of Menden, has provided us a link to the uh, free GIS software from Mask of Offers. Ah, there you go. So thank you, Jason, for that. Thank you, Jason. Hello, Jason. How are you? Hello, and you're welcome. It has a ton of different layers. It, it won't be able to do like super detailed stuff. I'm sure at some point in time, somebody did come in to give you a software presentation because Mass actually offers like massive data sets that are not in this tool. 
um, if we want to get super detailed. But this is pretty powerful, and I've seen a bunch of other committees use it before. That's how I knew about it. Um, to it because because the big thing it can do you already mentioned is the assessor overlay, and you can see that on top of conservation land and all sorts of other different stuff. So it's super useful. Thank you. Excellent. You got it. I know we had two other two other guests on. I didn't know if any of other other guests who are connected remotely have any uh, comments or thoughts they want to provide on what's been spoken so far, Kathy or Karen. No, I'm good. Thank you. OK. All right, next item. Yale Harvey fiscal year 24 contract update. Um, last time I spoke to Mike Sespian, uh, we were waiting on a new contract as an addendum wasn't suitable for town council. Uh, he says that there are seven municipalities that are waiting on their own contract, so we are in line. So I do not have a current contract with EL Harvey yet for the town of Menden. Okay. Um, but but we, we did sign that letter of intent. Intent Why? for the extension. Right. Well, I, I thought it was an intent that we were going to sign with them. Oh, yes, that letter. Yes, we did. Right. So, but Mike did ask if we, we could we sign have an agreement. But he did ask if we could sign the addendum until the contract was finalized. Okay. Um, I don't have a problem doing that if it's okay with town council. Town council has not responded. Okay. So as soon as they do, okay, someone from the board of health can sign it until we get the full contract provided. The response is a positive one. Okay. Yeah, I would, I would concur if, if Karis is fine. That. That's okay. But if not, I mean, very fortunately, we've done business with them before. Oh, no, I you know, it's not a new vendor, yeah. um, but we certainly don't want to be left out in the cold because all the paperwork's not complete. No, we, we have to make sure, you know, Karis is representing the town and we have to make sure that, you know, from a legal perspective, we're protecting our interests, the town's interests as well. Absolutely. In, in the relationship, right? So Yeah, we would, wouldn't want to have a, an issue in between getting the official paperwork. Right. Yep. All right. Um, how long has it been since you put that request in? I believe my gas last week. Okay. Uh, I'll walk with her with an email tomorrow morning. Yeah. Please. Because technically the new contract would start July 1. Mm -hmm. So, so this Saturday. Yeah, so we're there. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be unheard of that the service can't move forward as it has. No, no. Without, Especially where but, we already signed preliminary paperwork yeah. that we were serious. Oh, yeah. You know? Um, Important to follow the rules, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Next topic. Next topic is the Menden Landfill update discussion. Um, Atlas has sent over an agreement regarding their extended services, uh, which required a third party inspection, uh, the permit modification for the type of testing, and an access agreement. Uh, Town Council has recommended a few changes, which I've outlined on this page and on the contract itself for the board's review. I believe I did. I read this email form, maybe. I've read those uh, additions in, in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, whatever they um, whatever they suggest. 
So has have these adjustments been submitted to Alice? No, not as of yet. Okay. If the board's fine with these, I'll submit it. Sure. Um, yeah. 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 Okay. I think uh, following Karis's direction would be the way to go. All right. We'll just see what kind of feedback we get from from Atlas. Yeah, from Atlas. Yeah. Before we moved on to the next one, just out of I know we stepped away from the contract update and talk about El Harvey. Did we want to discuss any? Um... We can. I, I I kind of forgot about it. Yeah. But yeah, we can we can definitely uh, discuss uh, accommodations. Yeah, I mean, I know it's uh, come up uh, for a couple of residents who have some certain situations where it might be kind of difficult for them. The new automation program and have presented. Um, you know, this scenario and if whether or not they can be accommodated to basically do what they've been doing. And I think uh, it seems like EL Harvey is uh, amenable to it, right? So uh, hopefully that. You know, that's the case and that as these situations come up, um, Yale Hobby will be able to, you know, just kind of handle them as one offs. You know, we have one particular resident going to have some difficulty with these 65, you know, gallon totas, you know, uh, where they have a super long driveway is the one example here and uh, they don't put out much trash, basically two bags. So I know that Yale Hobby is trying to get away from manual throwing right so hopefully yeah i i think the way i understand is we, we do have a adjustment period yep you know as with any new procedure mm -hmm. there needs to be a period of time for everybody to get on board and to work the kinks out uh it sounds like there were um just a few kinks when this program went into effect in hopedale yep. um people May have been a little, you know, taking a little bit of a learning curve to get into the new system, but as far as what actual accommodations had to be made, um, I thought I heard like four. Yes, it was very pound wide. So that was excellent. Once you know things got moving. Yeah. Um, I think today we've only had two or three ourselves. We got like five total. Five. But a few of them are like uh, two of them, I believe, are on Uxbridge Road, the dirt road. It goes up by Alex. Goes up days. off of sixteen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Bringing it down those totes down. Right. Right. The yep. truck can't get into that. Right. Yep. Yeah. And then there was a woman from Pleasant Street, an elderly woman mm -hmm. that wrote, uh, sent in a handwritten note. Yes. Um, and she puts out very little trash. Right. Yeah. Um, I didn't see any contact information on that. Um, but I'm sure we could. Through the assessor's office or the tax collector. Oh, sure. I have her name on the bill, so I can look up. Yeah, well, we have her name, but I didn't see like a cell phone number or all I saw wow. was name and address. So, you know, we should reach out to her, um, you know, in the next week or so. It's going to, we're not getting the totas for a couple of weeks. Uh, starts July 10th. Okay. So, you know, we should reach out to her and let her know that she can, at this time, she can do what she's been doing and we'll you know work it along um i actually reached out to uh selectman uh kuda and he was nice enough to reach out to the um current boy scout leader um i haven't had a, an email conversation with him yet but they are willing to try to be helpful in this uh matter nice. if someone you know can't get their trash out mm. uh, but there's more discussion that has to be you know taken place yeah uh, and as we spoke at our last meeting um we're sort of going to have to take things case by case as they come mm -hmm. um, because we really don't know exactly what the problems are mm -hmm. the problems may be seasonal we may have pe more people during the winter months that need help <laughs> than during the other eight months or right. nine months mm -hmm. So, you know, that is something that's kind of being worked on in the background uh, and I will send them an email and get some more details on, uh, you know, how they may be able to help us, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with people in the community that 
may struggle. I mean, the totas uh, are bigger than a 32 gallon trash can, obviously, but um, depending upon the weight you put in it, they are on wheels. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, I have a fifth of a mile gravel driveway. I got to learn a new trick. Uh, so, you know, it'll take, there'll be an adjustment period. <laughs> And, you know, we'll do what we have to do to get everybody on board. Do we also want to mention the uh, opportunity for people to discard any? Yes, I no. scheduled with, um, I believe it was July 22nd, both Saturdays. Yeah, I'll just confirm. Make sure I get my dates right. Yeah, so Saturday, July 22nd and Saturday, July 29th from 8 a.m. to noontime at the highway department. Uh, people who want to get rid of their old barrels, recycling bins, uh, since new totals will be arriving, uh, they can do so at the highway department, no cost. It's very nice of them. Yeah, no, I, that's fantastic. Because yeah. um, I had talked with Phil, and Phil told me to cut them up and put them in the tota. Mm -hmm. That's a lot easier than cutting them up. So uh, that that's fantastic. I did receive a couple of calls saying that um, that they couldn't get them down there, that he wouldn't fit in their car or they didn't have a vehicle. I just simply said, I'm sorry. So call a friend, call a family member, talk to a neighbor. Yeah. Oh. I, do you have their information? Uh, in an email, I do. Yes. All right. So here's an opportunity for some for service. Yeah. Um, I think of uh, Brothers with a Brush. There's opportunities that have come up before where certain residents have needed assistance with uh, certain el elements. So my suggestion might be if you have a resident who has a need like that, um, it's a good opportunity. We have plenty of gentlemen in the area who have vehicles and whatnot. Um, our president puts out the, the word and a lot of times we have someone who can provide the assistance that they're looking for to transport you know, barrels that they can't get them down to themselves. Maybe that's something that Brothers of the Brush could help with. Yeah, I would say take names and numbers. No. Yeah. And we'll see what we can put together on behalf of their brothers. I know I'll be bringing mine down. So if on the way, if I can scoop up a few other people's, I'd be more than happy to. All right. Um, so they'd be very appreciative of that. It's either a board of health member or a member of the brush. You can bring both hats with you. There you go. <laughs> I'll, I'll wear this shirt and I'll wear my other hat. There you go. Um, so. Yeah, definitely take names and numbers and uh, we'll uh, we'll figure it out. Well, do I want to blast that out saying that it is available if you have an issue getting them down there or case by case, just wait for people to call? Well, it's it's it'd probably be case by case where, where people are, would inform us okay. that they have a problem right. and then we can address the problem. Um, otherwise, the expectation would be that folks are going to be able to take advantage of it mm -hmm. as it's been presented they'll be able to get their barrels down there if they want to utilize it that way or if they choose like you just mentioned they want to cut them up put them in their trash with the trash that was also an acceptable option yeah right so there you go. yeah but you have to cut them up right the, the truck will not be Couldn't able take them to home. No. Act. no yeah, you know, there'll be voids in the load, and he right. won't be able to get the tonnage on. Right. Uh, yeah, I would say take names and numbers. Okay. There's only been like maybe two at most. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because we haven't officially presented it to the brothers. No. We know that there'll be someone will step up. No, we know what what happens typically is something a service need comes to us, and um, then our president becomes aware. And they'll usually send out an email blast to the group, say, hey, guys, we have a resident who's in, who has a need, whether it be to move a piece of furniture or we've done that in the past uh, or something like this. Mm -hmm. uh, someone's could be maybe could make themselves available, could help out. Please let let us know and communication starts. And yeah, we, so it's a nice little no, that's extra a, thing that's we, a try to, we try to do. Yeah. No. Excellent. Anything else along those lines? Not on my end. 
Uh, we do have a hand, Karen. Karen, go ahead. Hi, I just want to say that the communication from the Board of Health to the people has been fantastic and that everybody appreciates it very much. Thank you. Well, thank you, Karen. We really, really appreciate the compliment. Thank you so much. You're yes, welcome. thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Okay. We want to move on to the next item. Sure. All right. Uh, part time health agent vacancy update. There really is no update. Um, between um, HR not being fully on board, our town administrator position in transition. Um, it sounds like as of uh, this afternoon, all the uh, pieces aren't in place yet. Mm -hmm for us to um, to move on this. Were you able to ask Mike at the did. and he, he was going to reach out and then reach back to me. OK, uh, but I probably reached out to him six o'clock. Okay. So I haven't heard back from him um, and I didn't expect to hear back from him this evening. OK, um, so let's get him on the phone right now. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> this is night off. Oh, OK, well, in that case he's entitled. He, he's entitled to a night off. Um, so it, it's it's in motion, but all the pieces aren't put together yet. Um, Things take time. It, bad it, was, timing. it was a perfect storm. Yeah, bad timing with you know the vacancies Changes, yeah. all around. Yeah. Um, but the you know candidate that we're looking at, under, I think, understands. We have we had a recent communication with the. That she knows that we are still waiting on. So and you know it's, the interest is still there. We haven't had any new candidates or not that I was made aware come, of. Or, okay, so. But so that's good. So we're going to keep that individual in the loop and this will eventually come to fruition. I, yeah, I, I unfortunately, it's like other items on the agenda, everything's in queue. This seems to be where we're at right now. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, I'm sure I'll be in communication uh, with Mike in the next day or so. Uh, he'll be getting back to me as to where we're at uh, on the office side of things. And uh, I'll relay that, you know, through Jack. Yep. So next, Lake Network Beach Water Testing Discussion. I saw Jack provided us with the paperwork. Yeah, so the first testing, the limits in the state of Massachusetts is 235. Uh, so our first testing that we had on June 19th was to, uh, 280. So we exceeded the limits. Uh, a retest was done on June 21st, and it dropped down to 68.9. So we'll be below the limit. And this week, Tested on June 26. It went back up to 261. And uh, uh, Dan brought over a test yesterday to micro back, and it is down again, but this time to 104. So we are below the limits. And just for those listening, uh, the limit that we go by is uh, from the state is, uh, is uh, phrased in uh, 235 parts per uh, PPN per one most probable number per 100 milliliters. Yep. So that the readings that we got um, were not dramatically excessive in comparison to the um, to the allowable limit that's put forth. So which is which is good, still higher than the uh, than what we'd like to see it at uh, from the state's perspective. So. Um, That's interesting. Yeah, Dan was a little. Uh, I mean, what a difference a couple of days makes. Yeah. Well, you you know, one of the big factors in this testing has always been uh, weather. We've been part of it, you know, and it's always seems to be when there's been rains and so forth, and you do a test right after a rain, or that seems to contribute to that value uh, increasing. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, you know, there's. This is one of the reasons why we're 
why we uh, why this uh, Lake Genbuck Task Force has been formulated to address elements such as this. Um, I mean, an extension of this, although the Board of Health's domain has pretty, has pretty much been the beach, right, as far as testing and making sure that the water at the beach, water quality is acceptable for the swimmers, we've actually taken a, a greater step and actually we want to, we've incorporated the lake as a whole, which is how the uh, Lake Dipmuck Task Force kind of came about. They're going to be the, the focal group that'll be kind of focused on you know, kind of making sure that that lake uh, kind of gets the attention that it needs. And again, it it's, uh, involves representation from all those groups that you know I mentioned previously. So we'll all, we all have kind of a stake and a, and a hand in kind of making sure that, you know, the quality of the, the lake is, you know, stays at a good level. Is the beach open? The beach is open. Yes, yep. it's open this Monday. Okay. Yep, open this past Monday, yep. Um, and so along with this element of testing, you know, and we talked about this previously, we want to expand it um, so that in addition to just testing at the beach area, we want to be testing the lake. And I think in the past, we've already kind of identified five different points around the lake that would be good test areas that we'd like to kind of see results from and you know, see if we have any kind of weak spots or problem areas one over the other that may need some, you know, more aggressive attention on addressing, you know, mm -hmm. there's a concern for stormwater exposure in the lake is one, one issue. Uh, but, oh. Yeah, and I, I think I saw recently something came to my attention. Uh, I don't remember the source, but they were talking about uh, they were treating the weeds. Yeah, they were doing that last week. That's on the main page of the board of um, kind of Menden website. Okay, and then um, was there something else about um, nitrates? People fertilizing their properties too close to the lake. Yep, fertilizer uh, was also concerned with regard to increasing the nitrates. Right, which is a component of what we want to make sure when this testing around the lake takes place that we're capturing. Um, testing for various components um, more so than maybe what we might have done initially here for the first round at the beach mm -hmm. um, and nitrates are one of those one of those elements right and I, I, I did check um, with one of my suppliers I know at one time I thought it was like you had you could fertilize up to with 12 feet of the water's edge and I was corrected it was either 75 or 150 feet. Yeah. See? Uh, so a lot further back oh yeah. than yep. what I was told, you know, a number of years ago, your, your safe limit was. Right. Yep. Um, and most of these fertilizers are synthetic. So we, we, we know what happens when we mess with Mother Nature. Right. Yep. So, um, I mean, everybody wants a green lawn. I get it. Yep. Um, but if it's affecting the health of the lake, then we need to change our practices so that, you know, we can have both the, the green lawn and the healthy lake. You know, since we, uh, we don't have, we had Jason still on it. No, he said he had to bow out. Oh, I was going to ask him a question, but. Anything else on that topic? I'm good on that. Do we know if the um, committee has become active yet? Are we still putting it together? Well, to my understanding, um, the select board has uh, approved the uh, committee, so it's now formally um, exists. I don't believe there's been a formal notification. I think the one pending assignment, though, is at the select board level. I don't yet know if uh, a representative from the select board has been determined to be part of that uh, okay. task force yet. So that's probably the one variable and maybe they're waiting for that piece to complete. Right. Before they spread the official word. Um, that, you know, yeah, I, I know the Lake Nipmuc Association has been meeting because I've seen their signs on yes. Taft Ave. 
Yeah, they so, still do their thing. Yeah, they they've, so they've resumed their normal cycle of meetings. Right. Um, and they they may have met continuously. It's just that now that I'm seeing, you know, a visual notification when I drive down Taft Ave, as a reminder to people that yeah, um, their regular meeting schedule has resumed. Yeah. All right. Very good. Yeah, we're gonna um, you know, part of this in discussing this uh, testing element. We also have that component about the uh, health of the uh, septics systems around the lake. Uh, and we are probably going to have to make some movement on that. I know we've had initial communication that went out. Uh, overall, I don't know what the what had been the feedback on that. I probably say things. I probably will probably go 70 percent response. 70. Yeah, so that's yeah, that's pretty, pretty good. good. That's pretty good. So. Um, that's encouraging. Yeah. So we may have to take a couple of additional mm -hmm. steps to try to get the information yeah. that I think we need. You know. No, absolutely. I mean, it's it's for everyone's benefit. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's a long time coming. You know, I mean, it's something that Missy started working on a number of years ago. Uh, Jack, you kind of took the mapping to completion almost or 99% yep. based on the information you could get your hands on and created a dynamite visual for <laughs> us. Um, so, I mean, progress has been made, even though it, it seems to take a long time to get there. Um, and, you know, with the, uh, I mean, Lonnie Tinio was uh, very uh, vocal in making sure that the, the funds were available to expand the testing and and to uh, make an attempt to get that lake uh, yep. back to uh, you know 100% usable condition and, and, and maintain uh, it. That's a good point from a financial perspective. But you know it had been approved. The board of health did add into its uh, budget additional um, amount mm -hmm. for this testing to take place that we want to do you know around the lake. So that's been factored in. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing. Yeah, so we should uh, we should be good. Yep. All right. Um, topics not anticipated. All right, so I do have one. We've had an issue of a complaint uh, at 10 Northbridge Street. Uh, a tenant who is renting an apartment at that location is complaining about the cesspool in the backyard. Uh, I have sent out Danielle Edmonds, our health agent out there, to inspect it. Uh, she did find uh, that the cesspool is in failure. Uh, when the tenant who lives in the basement flushed her toilet, the water was bubbling above ground from the cesspool. Um, Danielle and Steve Donatelli, the Title V engineer, did go out and review the property today, this afternoon, and Steve Donatelli definitely said, yes, the system is in failure. Um, it was... On Monday that I sent out a Title V enforcement order to the homeowner explaining the situation, and I have not heard back from him as of yet. Okay, but you... But I did speak with him on the phone during the situation. I explained to him the, what has been happening. I did tell him that we did not have any pumping records on file for his property. He said he has had service before, so I requested for those records from him. I have not received those records as of yet. Okay, but more than willing to cooperate. Yes, very nice guy. So he's he's on board mm -hmm. and we can help him mm -hmm. and uh, we can get that taken care of. Yep. And that's all I have for not anticipated. I can't think what, of what is our curiosity given the state of that property and if i heard correctly it was uh was it uh affecting the internal nothing was coming inside the house flushing or just nothing. external yeah just outside just extra okay yes what would be our expectation um on addressing what we would expect of this well um, or two? i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm not steve donatelli but i'm gonna guess that it needs to be pumped immediately in an attempt to get it to 
function as good as possible. You know, it may need to be pumped frequently. Did yeah. the enforcement order specify a yeah, pumping so with an X number of days? In the enforcement order, it says you are hereby ordered to have the system pumped by a licensed septic hauler amendment within 24 hours receiving this order. You shall also be required to begin pumping the system once per month or more frequently if so ordered by this office. In addition, you are ordered to submit documentation to the board of such pumping within 36 hours of having the system pumped. You must also provide such documentation every time the system is serviced. And if it's in failure, obviously he's going to have to get an engineer to design a new system. Correct. Oh, sure. You know, for mm -hmm. the, the long term fix. Correct. Yeah. Yep. All right, so I wasn't too far off, even though I didn't read all the details. <laughs> yep. um, I mean, obviously, you know, they need to do what they can to make that thing function safely. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a uh, bit in, of a public health issue. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, I watched the video and. Yeah. Um, it that was, wasn't crude oil coming up. No. Nah. <laughs> no, no. The Beverly Hillbillies aren't uh, striking it rich, but, nope. you know, I mean, we. we you know these these things happen. I know. Uh, so you know, as long as they're dealt with when they're brought yep. to someone's attention, whether it's the board of health or the homeowner or both, uh, we are more than willing to work with someone to uh, to get the job done. Yep. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I can't think of anything else at this time. You talk. Uh, I can, uh, do we, um, we've done a new contract with VNA. I have a new contract here. No price has changes have happened. So it's the same price as last year. I just need the chairman of the board to sign off on. Okay. Yeah. So, actually there's two copies. You verified that this is last year's number. It is last year's number. I mean, it looks very familiar to me, but. Assign both copies. Yes, please. Out of curiosity on the uh, 10 Northbridge Street, um, did either Danielle or Steve talk about um, a, a follow up date that they would plan to go back to just to check on the situation? Well, that was mentioned in the order. Yeah, uh, see if uh, he's received it. He hasn't received it as of this afternoon because I sent it certified, so he hasn't signed for it yet. I'm sorry, say it again. I missed that. I sent it certified mail. He hasn't picked it up. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. So I'm assuming once he has received it. Yep. I just didn't know if uh, Danielle and their feelings of Steve had mentioned, hey, I want to look to go back. Uh, she said she was going to email or be her report tomorrow okay. after her conversation with uh, Steve today. Okay. Right. So it might be in that. Yep. Two contracts and the uh, bubble letter. Thanks, sir. Thank you. I'm in that. Uh, I'm in that trust but verify mindset with that property. What's that? I'm in this uh, trust but verify mindset. Yes. That's yes. Yeah. We trust.
trust it's all going to go well. But let's verify. Sounds it. like it. Any um, items for the next agenda that you can think of that you want to discuss? Uh, you know, Harvey. Yeah, well, that's a <laughs> right. Uh, that's that's, that's a necessity. Be. Um, if possible, I would like um, Danielle Edmonds as our animal inspector mm -hmm. to call in okay if possible just to touch base find out how things are going find right. out if you know what she's been up to on, on wearing that hat yeah um and anything that she may see coming down the road um and then um maybe a, just a little bit uh, the bond book obviously doesn't come out for a few more months i think it's september or october september, september. september. Yep. Um, but uh, I know I've heard from uh, a local resident that she felt as though maybe some things were being missed. Where, you know. We're an agricultural community and uh, a lot of people are, you know, housing animals that may not be uh, on the radar. Yeah. Yep. So if we could find, you know, talking with her, maybe brainstorm um a method of finding out what those addresses are so that they could get inspected and those animals could get counted and if there were any problems we could get them corrected by giving helpful suggestions mm -hmm. uh, so if we kind of have some of that stuff in play uh, maybe we could work with the ag committee to find some of those backyard farms so to speak it's a good idea. Maybe we could incorporate having somebody from the AgCom see if somebody's interested in attending, along with having Danielle, somebody, whether it be Ellen or whomever. Yeah, I mean, Danielle is very busy. She wears many hats. Oh, that's good. As far as the animal inspector component, yeah. sometimes we don't hear anything unless it hits the fan. Understood. No, but it's so, good to be able to touch base. Yeah, I'd rather, you know, get a feel. And what can, you know, maybe she could use our help for sure. something. You know, so it's one of those things unless something happens, as you said, right? So sort of out of sight, out of mind. But you just want them to know, hey, we're you know you're out there. We know this is a part of what you do, and yeah, we're very very fortunate to have her. Yeah, you know, we want to know. So I mean, and if for some reason she can't make that meeting, let's see if we can get her on for the following one, just so it doesn't okay. get dropped. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's the only thing that I kind of had in mind. Um. So that and EL Harvey, and of course, um, health agent vacancy. How about um, the retail checks, tobacco? I haven't heard anything more of that. You said you're going to try to reach out to what's her name? Yeah, I got to find her contact. That was the woman from Lemonster, I believe. Jody? Joan? Well, there were two women. Jody Fraganti was the invest the one who did the education. Yeah, and Joan she, Hamlet is the one. Yes, yes. That's the one. I have to find her contact information because we didn't qualify for that grant. Correct. Okay. Do a search and reach out to her. Because even if we have to pay we have to pay as long as we have the money somewhere in our account um we can get that done and again it's that old trust but verify mm. you know we were very fortunate when we had that elliot brown elliot company yeah. um once we got involved with them that seemed to run fairly well on an annual basis without any hitches um, we need to have that type of relationship again. What sure. happened to them? I don't know. I don't know if they stopped doing it, if the people they had aged out. Oh, and, um, could have been COVID. Yeah. COVID did a lot to a lot of different, you know, companies. Um, I don't remember. Um, I think we kind of lost communication with them after a while, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I can't recall uh, what it's happened. Almost like we reached out with them. Nobody reached back. Yeah. Um, 
and they're really, I, I forget how Missy hooked us up with Joan. Um, Next, actually, you mentioned the name. That's, we want to find out what happened. Missy? That'd be the person. Yeah. You know? I'm due to pay her a visit. <laughs> I haven't seen her in a while. Um, okay, so yeah, that, that's a good thing. I'll see what I can put together. I'm sure I can search through my phone uh, and find that. Because I, I, I did have her number in London stuff. Trying to think of different things that. Yeah, no. Uh... No issues with uh, a retail perspective that Danielle's been called out on. Things seem to be running yep. fine. And yep. yep. But good. All right. So if that's all we have, we can adjourn. Yeah, I'll make a motion. I'll step down and second. All right. Thank you, everyone. Being adjourned. Jeez, we thank you, uh, everyone, for attending. Looks like they signed off already. Uh, schedule the next meeting. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> You've already done that. I just have to look at my right. color coded the, calendar. It's the second and fourth Tuesday of every month. All right, so <laughs> July 12, 7 30. Yeah. Okay. All right. If you say so. You guys voted to adjourn? We did, yes. Yep. Pay attention. Yeah, I made up. the mo I made the motion. Alan stepped down a second. All right, good night, everybody. Good night.